Okay guys, so much requested is a shaker tutorial. I actually had to record, re-record this front, this first part of the video again because I don't know where the footage went because I recorded it in sections. But I'm gonna show you how to, this is just one of my new dies. It's the Honey Pot Shaker. And I'm just gonna show you how I cut the foam out and whatnot. Okay, so I'm on the floor. Sorry, it's bad lighting down here. But here's my Sizzix Big Shot. It is a six inch platform. I'm going to cut the frame part out for my shaker. This is five millimeter foam from Hobby Lobby. And here I am really cranking it because it's foam, it's thicker, it's a thicker foam, but you just have to run it through once, that's it. And then you can see right here, you can see the outline of it and it pops out super easy from the main frame. And then you pop out the center part as well. Notice I left the honey part because that part's just coming out and I'd rather not tear apart the dye and lose that word anyway. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use this. I didn't cut, I didn't show cutting out all the other little pieces, but you're just gonna use the single frame, which is like this. So this is the frame, and then this is the background piece, and then this is also the acetate. And I'm gonna, I've never cut with this die on this acetate, so I cut a little square. I know you can't see it on camera. So I'm gonna run that through. It doesn't cut the first time. I usually run it through twice, and if that doesn't do it, I do switch the, my base plate which is this plate right here because sometimes they're so old and warped i switch it to a metal precision base plate precision base plate and this cuts acetate like a charm but i don't like switching on my boards because it's just it's an extra step you know if i don't have to so i always try to cut it first with my big shot uh regular plates okay so as you can see it left like an impression and like cut on some of the parts but it didn't cut all the way through there's nothing wrong with the dye. This is a thicker acetate that I am using, but um, I'm gonna put the dye back on it and I'm gonna run it through with my precision plate. So I lined it up on my precision plate. Sometimes you can't line it up exactly again and you gotta get a new piece of acetate or um, line it up and use washi tape. I remember my husband was like, that does not sound good. Like you're back cracking. Off the acetate cutting like butter with a precision plate. So there's my acetate. Acetate tips and trips. So if I don't have 110 pound cardstock, I usually like to make the bases of my shakers a little bit stronger. I usually use 110, but I don't have any in yellow right now. So I just cut it out twice. I would maybe do it three times. I'm using my Barely Arts. Just enough to get it on there and stick these two pieces together. So there's that, and then I work with the foam, make sure you're using the right side. The back side will be a little bit sloppier than the front side. It'll have a nicer cut. And I just stick some glue all the way around on the bigger parts. And then the intricate parts you do last, because you gotta work slower. And sometimes like a lot of glue comes out and it doesn't, I'll use the shaft of my glue bottle, whatever glue bottle I'm using and run it through so it kind of makes it smooth. Again, a little strand, a bead, and then go down. Smooth it out. And I kind of just line it up the best I can and I move it around once I pick it up. Okay, so I'm gonna push it down with my hand to let it grip for a couple seconds. And as you can see, there's yellow hanging over the edge here. Okay. And that's because there's white foam hanging on the edge of the top. So I always turn it to the back side, and I just push down because it's it's hanging off the edge right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna hold that down for a couple seconds because I know that's where I want the foam. And then now on the side there's a little bit I would kind of just push and hold, nip and tuck. And then the bottom, as you can see the yellow, you can kind of just shape it a little bit, turn it back to the front, and just hold it for a couple seconds. So this is what I do. I move the foam around just enough. And you can always tell on the backside where it's hanging over. So here it's hanging over a little bit. I'm gonna push it in and push it down. Pinching it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then if it's where I want, I kind of put my hand back on it, make sure you're not smearing it. And then get something heavier, paper, paper, no, stuff from around. <laughs> And while that's drying, I'll get the acetate, make sure I get my fingertips off of it. 
or my my fingerprints. I'll use my t-shirt. This acetate is actually from Amazon. It's thicker. I don't know if they still sell it. If they do, I will link it. I just still have the same pack. Otherwise, I've been using the um, the stuff from Michael's Clearance. They have that as well. It's very thin, like transfer sheets. This is where I glue the frame part that I want to work with. And this part, you don't have to get every little um, nook and cranny. I usually just do uh, dots because the sequins aren't going to slip out of this. It's the acetate that you got to glue down good. Little shaker. Kind of line him up because you don't want the glue to... Glue always leaves smear marks. This glue is clear, but you know, you can always still tell that there was glue somewhere. Okay. Can just move it around, adjust it. Because these two, the paper and the acetate, won't warp when you're die cutting it. Foam warps. Then I'll get my t shirt and I'll go in and go around the edges. Whatever t shirt pajamas I'm doing, that's what I do. And I take all the excess uh, glue off. So now this is drying on the acetate. My frame, my what's we'll call it? It's drying. It's pretty fast, so I'm like really impatient. So I would get this and start doing my honey. I don't know what color I should do. I'm not gonna make like a mix or anything and I don't have any like cute bees or anything. I have ladybugs, but I don't think that'll look good. Okay, so now that you have all your shaker bits, because this is five millimeter foam, you could stick a lot in here. You could stick seed beads. Oh, that's what I could do. I'll get my frame, get it ready get my glue bottle and I'm gonna again I do the bigger areas first because you can work fast and sloppy and then I'll get my the frame part again I'll go over it with the shaft I'm gonna smear out any big oozes of bubbles or spots that I missed and then I'll go again and smear it out and smooth it out okay so that's my shaker there's my acetate, and this is where you don't know if the foam is gonna line up perfectly with the the frame. So I kind of just hold it for six, seven seconds. Okay, <laughs> just enough for it to grip, and then I can kind of move it around if I'm not happy. So tuck the foam in and hold it down. Okay, it's popping out a little bit over here, tuck it in, nip and tuck, and that's what this is called when you are working with foam. So now again, it's as good as it's going to get, put the paper down, put some weight on it. Ooh, this is heavier, much heavier. Okay, and then same concept with the foam, with like words, something very intricate, this is where it'll get, you know, trickier. Okay, it'll just stick. Okay, I'm just gonna line this up and you gotta you're gonna have to shimmy this around until you get it where you like it. Push it down for a few seconds so it can just grip. Because you're able to still move it, you know, it's not hot glue. Okay, so see how the H is off? I would just move that around and pinch. See some other areas, the O, let's do the Y. Okay, that's good enough for this shaker and look at her shake. Super cute, I'm gonna do a little honey. This guy, this is the, I did the honey drip and I'll just finish this out with you guys. Just gonna do a couple like little squares and you can't tell because I'm working with glitter but this new die actually has stitching detail which is super cute if you don't use glitter if you use like say a bunch of different tones of just regular cardstock you'll definitely see the dimension even the drip has um, like lines down it okay super dimensional and then again I'll do it with the honey drip as well just line it up like that. 
and you don't have to use this. Um, DM did a super cute like candy jar shaker of this. And then this is the stir. Okay, I'm gonna um, fast forward through this boring part. Okay, so let's see, this is still recording. Okay, so it's still recording. Okay, so here is my shaker. I just did the little honeybee. I popped him up on um, puffy tape. The foam um, word just, the foam word just made it, you know, stand up more. The little stir. I did the, the drip puffed up. Just a fun little shaker. Oops, some glue scraps on the back. I gotta clean up once it's fully dry and sturdy. But yeah, I'll put um, weight on this and let it dry some more. And I usually forget about it and find it the next day. <laughs> All right. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, um, leave it down below. I will try to link stuff if I can find stuff. And I will catch you guys on the next crafty video. Bye, guys.